In this video, we're going to be talking about three different ways of dealing with information. Analog, digital, and quantum. Right now, your brain is processing this video. How? What's going on inside your head? Which of these three is your mind using? So let's first break down what I'm even talking about. Okay, so in terms of clocks, let's start out with a good old analogy. A clock in the analog world would be something very familiar. It would have hands that move around it. A digital clock would be, well, a digital clock. One with set boundaries of measurement. Usually it's in minutes, but it could be seconds. And so far, so good. You're, you're familiar with both of these concepts, I imagine. The quantum world is where we get a little bit crazy. A quantum clock in this analogy would be spinning, representing all possible times and none of them in a state known as superposition. That is, until it's observed, at which point it would collapse into a specific time. All right, let's use another analogy and really break down each one. Okay, so just think about a regular coin, a coin that you flip. All right, in the analog world, you could have the coin turned at really any degree you want. Let's say it's 33.7% heads. So let's look at this. Analog information is a reflection of the universe. If you think about it, essentially there's an infinite amount of colors out there, an infinite amount of sounds, smells, etc., an analog signal is a natural extension of this. Think about an ultrasound. All right, you have these sound waves bouncing off of a womb so that you can quote unquote see the fetus. It's a process that's a continuous stream of data that represents a real world measurement. Okay, in this case, it's the echoing of sound waves off of the fetus. It's analogous to another quantity. It's kind of like a barometer measuring pressure and in turn affecting a needle to show you the amount of said pressure. The needle is analogous to the pressure amount. Okay, this is all fine and good until you consider that analog data is susceptible to what they call noise. Now, this can show up in different ways. In an audio recording, it can show up as a hiss, or it could be so-called snow in a video format. Trying to stretch out an analog signal, especially over distance, it's like making a Xerox copy of a copy of a copy of a copy. Ultimately, you're going to have unwanted information introduced, which degrades the initial piece of information. If you want a better way of transmitting information, enter digital. Digital in the coin analogy is easy. It's either heads or tails. It's a one or it's a zero. It's binary. There are two distinguishable waveforms. In computers, for example, it's usually high voltage and low voltage, each of which are mapped into a digit. So it's interesting. Computers use analog voltages and turn them into digital bits. So it's a conversion takes place because you have these analog waves that are smooth and continuous that are turned into digital waves that are stepping, square, and discrete. And unlike analog, they necessarily have a finite level of values. So you, if you want a higher resolution of the information, if you want more detail, you have to use more binary digits. And compared to analog, digital is a much cleaner and reliable way of dealing with information due to this lack of noise that I mentioned before. Bits are reliably on or off, not somewhere in between. It's, it's easy to transfer this information and process it. So now that we have an idea of what digital and analog is, what's your brain? The answer is complicated to say the very least. There is a simplified view of looking at the neurons inside your brain as digital units, either generating potential or they are not, but 
the reality scientists are finding is much more complicated and it's looking more like an analog system but honestly we have a long way to go to figure out how exactly the brain works and speaking of a field that has a long way to go let's talk about quantum computing back to the coin analogy so in the quantum world it would be spinning it's in a state of superposition it is neither heads or tails until you look at it and then it, it is one or the other a thought experiment to understand this better is something called schrodinger's cat in this hypothetical situation you are supposed to imagine a cat inside a box with a bowl of poison and you don't know whether or not the cat drank the poison Therefore, you don't know if the cat is alive or dead inside the box. That is, until you open it. This analogy explains how the basic unit of quantum information, or a qubit, works. Like the cat in the unopened box, the state of a qubit is not known until it's observed. It's in a superposition state of both binary 1 and 0. As you can imagine, qubits have to be isolated. And this is in an effort to avoid what's called quantum decoherence. This is when the superposition state collapses into either a 1 or a 0 in this case. To do this, they're kept in these vacuum chambers that have very few particles. I'm talking fewer particles than are even in outer space or in refrigerators that are colder than anything in the universe. Why would they want to do this? Because... Quantum computers can solve certain problems in minutes that would take the fastest conventional supercomputer more than 10,000 years to. When this happens, it's known as quantum supremacy. With that said, it is not that productive or useful to compare quantum computers to standard digital computers or classical computers as they're known. It'd be like saying that a new LED light is a really powerful lantern it's it's they're completely different technologies quantum and digital quantum is so different to digital that analog seems like the same thing as digital in comparison you could in theory make a computer constructed completely out of wood with wood gates uh, using some billiard balls assuming there's perfect elasticity between the billiard balls and you assume no friction, you could replicate the results of any existing computer. This is just something that you cannot do with quantum. There's no physical way to build a quantum computer out of wood, even in theory. Quantum is a field of its very own. Anyway, wrapping up, analog versus digital versus quantum. I hope that you understand these three ways of dealing with information better than you did when you started the video. Thanks for watching this video today. If you want to learn more about topics like these, feel free to subscribe, and I will see you next time.